Good day, folks. Thank you for joining us here at Your Health. Many of you watching today have recently lost a spouse, and you are quite unsure if you can carry on. Well, on today's program, Dr. Richard Mabry joins us. He has written a book, The Tender Scar, Life After the Death of a Spouse. And I know this book will help many of you find joy in your life once again. You're thinking now it can never happen, but it can. If you take some steps to help you relieve this grieving process, go through it. This program is going to help a lot of people today. But first, let's go to our news. Let's see what's happening in the health world. In the English language, we often use the word air in a multitude of ways. You air your grievances, things can be up in the air, and this program is on the air. However, more than 25 million Americans are at war with the air they breathe as they struggle with respiratory allergies and asthma. For these people, we are happy to air the latest report from Johns Hopkins University. Researchers evaluated health statistics of more than 8,000 people ages 2 to 85, finding those with the lowest blood folate levels were significantly more likely to suffer with allergies and asthma. The study subjects with the lowest folate levels were 40% more likely to have wheezing, 16% more likely to have asthma, 31% more likely to have allergies, and 30% more likely to have elevated blood levels of the allergy associated associated antibody IgE. Now the report goes on to say considerable work still needs to be done before doctors should recommend everyone with allergies or asthma should start supplementing their diet with folate. However, I must assert we have known for some time now those with low folate levels are at heightened risk for immune dysfunction, anemia, spinal cord deformities in their offspring, and total body inflammation and the cardiovascular disease this inflammation creates. So it's not too far-fetched to imagine low folate levels could also aggravate allergies and asthma. It always amazes me when doctors caution us about the dangers of vitamins, when these same doctors are perfectly willing to hand out toxic medications that in many cases have been studied less than the vitamins they're so cautious to recommend. Bottom line on this one, folks, it's okay to supplement with folate if you have allergies or asthma. We already know you need it for blood production and for lowering your cardiovascular disease risk. Well, how much should you take? Most authorities consider a one milligram daily dose of folate entirely safe. Walt Whitman once wrote of a commonly held sentiment, give me the splendid silent sun with all his beams full dazzling. Perhaps our recognition of the need to be engulfed in sunlight reflects the sun's essential life-giving properties. And the findings of, a new research, of new research from Australia confirms the essential role of the sun and the vitamin D it provides. Get this, folks. The study found those admitted to an intensive care unit with low vitamin D levels are more likely to be the sickest and to die. The researchers evaluated 42 consecutively admitted patients into an endocrinology intensive care unit, finding 45% were vitamin D deficient. They also found the sicker the patient, the more likely they were vitamin D deficient. Of the 42 patients studied, there were three deaths, and those three patients who died had the lowest vitamin D levels found in the study. Folks, this study from uh, the New England Journal of Medicine is most fascinating. The conclusion again, if you're admitted to the ICU because of serious illness and you have a low vitamin D level, well, you're in for a tough haul. Now, the researchers are quick to point out all the 42 patients admitted to this Australian ICU had endocrine or hormone-based diseases, so the results are somewhat biased. But I think these researchers are on to something critically important. We have known for a long time now having a low vitamin D level can lead to chronic health problems such as osteoporosis or even cancer, but this study shows vitamin D deficiency can also lead to acute life-threatening disease. This team of researchers wants to conduct a second study, one that gives vitamin D to critically ill patients to see if they are more likely to get well. And of course, we will keep you up to date on the results when they come in. Today on Your Health, Dr. Richard Mabry joins us. Dr. Mabry has written a wonderfully insightful and helpful book titled The Tender Scar, Life After the Death of a Spouse, where he offers hope and healing for the brokenhearted. Have you lost a loved one? If so, today's Your Health is for you. Join us, won't you?